We live? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Old Reader, New Reader. Um, sorry, we're a little bit late tonight. We got some mishaps with Trick or Treat, but we are all here now and ready to go. Here I have with me our fabulous co-host, Maddie. Hey. And, and Omar, the old reader. Hey, what's hey. up, guys? How's everybody doing? And, and today we are going to be talking about Mike um, Mignola's, I think I pronounced that right, um, Mignola. Hellboy, Mignola, um, Hellboy Volume 1 and 2. So to kick things off, let's give you a little bit of a summary about the book. So Volume 1, uh, pretty much the summary is uh, in the 1940s during World War II, some, a wizard um, who was working for the Nazis summoned um, Anung Unrama, or Hellboy, and the uh, BPRD found him, raised him as his own, and so now he's a paranormal investigator investigating different paranormal activities, and his investigations lead him to the person who summoned him and starts to reveal some sort of you know backstory as to where he came from in his past. So we want to start talking with volume one? Sure. Yeah, we can yeah. go volume by volume, I think. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. So let's talk so, volume one. This is practically what we read was the library edition, which contains both The Seed of Destruction and Wake the Devil. Also now collected in an omnibus softcover format, but who collects softcover omnibuses, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah I want to get those library editions. I love library editions anyways, whenever I can get them. So the art in this is definitely worth it. So I'll be all right, picking show, that up. The yeah. show was late because it took 31 minutes for a man to put <laughs> dot on her Yeah. <laughs> that is That's exactly, exactly why we were late. That's exactly why we were late. <laughs> All right. Yes, yeah, I honestly be a trick or treating late, and on the way back, I was like, "Man, these names are real hard and and Hellboy. And so I had my my passenger because I was driving. I was like, "Okay, go on the Wikipedia page and read them out loud to me again." <laughs> <laughs> I'll never remember these. I know where I spirit them because I watched Anastasia like five million times. Yes, <laughs> everyone it. watched that. Yes. You know Rasputin because of Anastasia, not because of the historical figure that Rasputin Both? was. Well, I mean, Anastasia started it, and then I yeah. read about it, obviously. obviously. By the time, when Anastasia came out, I think they didn't teach Russian history to me at that time, which would have been when I was five or six. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mary, for saying all three of us look great. Thank yes, you. Yes, thanks. Thank you. And yeah, if you guys haven't known, we are we are dressed as the Titans. Um, we got Wonder Girl and oh, Nightwing. Yeah. And Can't see it Raven. all, but I got at the shirt. <laughs> Now, I'm not wearing the rest of my costume down below, so we're not going to do that standing up part, but <laughs> you get the chance. <laughs> Anyways, volume one. Maddie, what do you think? Okay, so I really liked it. I will say that I was trying to read this very quickly. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do my homework well. I was one of the bad <laughs> students who was like, okay, it's Monday. I can read this at work, and I'll get this done yeah. before Tuesday. And I'm, I'm a very fast reader. That's a good thing, but it could also be to my detriment. I read a lot of comics, but sometimes there's a book where I'm like, oh, crap, I should probably slow down. There's a lot of information to take in. Um, overall, I really love the setting to everything. I've never seen Hellboy, the movie, or anything, so this is my first foray into any of this. Okay, so I didn't, I knew what he looked like. I literally knew nothing else. I didn't know that he was a paranormal investigator. I didn't know any of this stuff. Um, I really like his character a lot. I really like his crew. Um, I don't really have a, a crazy opinion on it yet. It's like I'm, I think I need to absorb all of the volumes first <laughs> to give my like full thought to it. But so far I love Hellboy. I really like his um, reactions to everything. I, I mean, I always love the, you know, kind of standoffish kind of characters. He reminded me of Orin from Final Fantasy X. He's just like, <laughs> yeah, whatever. And even when it's something very important to him or his, like, origins, he just does not care. You know, any other character would be like, oh, well, I can't do this thing because I need to learn about myself. Where am I from and what's my purpose? He's like, I don't, I don't care. I just want to get home and chill. Like, you, demon, are in my way of me just relaxing right now. So if we can just feed this along. And I do like that they just kind of throw you into it. You know, it's just like, here it is. Like, Oh, well, this is my arm that nobody knows about. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess yeah. we'll find out about that later. Um, I kind of liked it. That was kind of refreshing. That was just like, you know, catch up. Here it is. I don't know. What did you think, Amanda? Oh. 
Um, no, I so as far as the first volume is concerned, um, I I liked the setting of it. This has been a little bit different from what we've read bef- so far in no in October for our spooky horror um, month, and I I agree with you about like you guys just have to jump in and just you know assume you know that you know he this is what happened to him. He was summoned fifty years later. He's part of this you know. And paranormal investigative team, which I don't know anything about. I know I've watched Hellboy the movie. I didn't watch the sequel, but I know I watched the original one, but I only probably watched it once, so I can't really tell you anything except for what actors were in it. Um, so coming into this, it was all completely new to me as well. Um, but I did like the flow of the story. It got a little narrative heavy at some times. A lot of exposition needed to be explained, which makes sense because you have a lot of this a lot of mythology being thrown at you from all different sides. So you kind of need that exposition, especially Rasputin. He just loved throwing out, explaining everything. <laughs> He's one of those bad villains. Who's like, let me explain it to you. And then he gets killed. Spoilers. For anyone who hasn't read it. Um, I mean, that's not just, really any new, or, that's not new news for Rasputin. No new Dusty. news if you've already read it. Or Dusty. Huh? Or Dusty. Yeah. Um... So yeah, so the first volume I really enjoyed it and I there's and going into the second volume there's still more mystery, right? And there are more volumes of this and I want to find out there's so much backstory obviously between the other characters that we don't even really touch upon. Just barely. Right. Like Liza Sherman. Like we don't even there's a hint of it and even Hellboy's backstory. Like briefly it's mentioned that he was born of a mortal woman in hell. But you know, what else is there to it? So um, this was just a small taste, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. What about you, Omar, rereading it for maybe the second, third, fourth time? Uh, this is my third go around with Hellboy. I read it uh, many, many years ago, like I think 97, 98. And then as the movies were coming out, I wanted to reread it. So I haven't read it since Guillermo uh, del Toro's movies. And I forgot, like, rereading the first one felt so much different than reading it for the first time because I remember it being really, really badass and really memorable and Mm -hmm. really liking Hellboy, which I still do. Um, But I can see why a lot of people would be confused if it's your first read through uh, because you you are kind of thrown in the middle of all this things that maybe you were supposed to know that don't come into play until much later. And keep in mind, this was a miniseries when it came out. Like it came out in 93, 94 and then there was the second miniseries that came out in, like, 96. Huh. So okay. we, we were kind of left on a cliffhanger, like, well, there's going to be more. But do I want, like, so you, you have to be hooked. And it kind of reminded me of, like, Guts in Berserk. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so I see that. I, I, because he's such a badass. Like, it, it doesn't matter what you throw at him. He, he just, he's like, fuck it, you know. I need to go home and make some dinner. Get out of my way, witch. <laughs> Or out of my way. Baba Yaga. <laughs> oh, that's one thing I love about this is um, when Maddie mentioned, like, it seems like you need to pay attention to the story. You really do because he throws a lot of mythological elements into it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of like in the way that Evangelion, I used that again last, like, last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Makes you want to research these things. Like, who were these characters? You know, what, where is the yes. original? Like, all these myths and lores that he talks about within the book. Most of them, and because um, that's what I did, I would I, mean, I would look yeah. these things up. Most of them were true, like based on real things. It's awesome. I love that about this. Uh, but yeah, li- you're you're thrown in these characters like Liz and Abe Sapien. You're like, oh, that guy with a beard. Oh, it's not a real beard. He he's a fish yeah. man. Interesting. Fish. Um, and if you had never seen the movie, then you're like, okay, these I guess they're like X Men. What are, what are these guys? BPRD. What does that mean? <laughs> But yeah. then as, if I as the story goes on, like, they kind of explain it uh-huh. though, a little bit. You're they like, do. okay, they deal with paranormal, so they're like they X-Files or story. something. Uh, right. It's not until, honestly, I didn't get hooked on Hellboy until the third and fourth volume, which is the library edition, too. Those oh, okay. are one of my favorite Hellboy stories. So these two are kind of like an introduction to the character with a small glimpse of an origin. Because his origin comes a little bit later, like who he really is. Oh, okay. he's to be. And you kind of get that in volume two when they're like hinting at like, oh, he doesn't know who he is. And yeah. Hellboy's like, I don't 
don't give a shit who I am. Like Maddie said, I just want to go home and eat my microwave burrito. But that's the way, that's just the way he is. All he knows, like, which is really refreshing. And it's a really good way to like, you know, it's, it's really important in stories not to give everything all away all at once, especially with origins or of, of anyone. And, you know, most of the time they just do that by making the story confusing. And even though the character wants to find it out in pieces at a time. And it's, kind of neat that you just have a main character like i don't care yeah <laughs> that's an easy way to make that plot work that way right so that way he's getting like you know we, we find the end of volume two as well like he's just getting little bits and pieces and it's just like i don't have time i literally I, oh sh- stop talking <laughs> like let's go i like that yeah a lot. yeah he doesn't also, i didn't realize it came out um i mean I, I did super no research i just picked this up and read it um i didn't realize it came out early 90s because it doesn't look like it i know well, it, it doesn't a lot newer it, it's amazing, like, his art style, how much... I, You know, out of all the things we've read so far, would you two say that this is probably the most unique kind of art that you've seen so far? Yes, yeah, I would agree. The use of color in it is spectacular, and just the way, um, you know, it just creates this whole... The sense of doom, which I guess is what you get, because it is about the end of the world, right? That's what Rasputin wants to bring it back with his... Uh, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Ragnarok <laughs> device. Um, it's just this sense of eeriness throughout it and just the use of color. Like, so in the second volume, when that Ilsa Hopstein, when he puts her on that Iron Maiden, um, and it's like all this, like that weird tealish color. And then you see that bright red blood that's coming out of it, which oh, I just watched the episode of Sabri- Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, <laughs> where they had, she gotten one of those in her dream. They'd put her in it. And I was like, oh, wow, that's weird that this is, I'm seeing that. Iron Maiden in, in two different mediums right now. But anyway, um, that use of that bright red, it just was very haunting. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. Very good use of color. You you mentioned color, but I was I'm I love his contrast of black and white. Like he is amazing. Yes. I don't think oh, anybody yeah. to me beats Magnolia's like just use of shadows. It's wonderful. Yes. And it his, reminded me so much of um Umbrella Academy's art by um well, yeah, those guys uh, are definitely inspired by him. Oh, Gabriel yeah, Black. must be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could tell Eduardo Rizzo, all those guys, they kind of go back to this guy. And, of course, he's hugely, like, big impact on his life was Jack Kirby. Like, a lot of the creatures, oh, the way okay. they look, a lot mm-hmm. of the, like, the creatures, the way they look, their faces especially, they have that Jack Kirby-ish face to them. Uh, like, yeah. Octavian, for that matter. Or later on, uh, people like uh, Lobster Johnson things like that. I mean, that is a very Kirby face right there. Just the way he's drawn. Just use, use more, a lot more shadows, right? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, he is one of my favorite artists of all time. Wonderful, wonderful art. Um, mm-hmm. I've always been a big fan of him since uh, Gotham by Gaslight, which was a Batman. Oh, he, he did that too. Okay. Yeah. That was the Batman Elseworld tell. But I mean, just, yeah. And he's, yeah. No wonder Guillermo del Toro wanted to do this. I mean, look at his creation of monsters. He's just oh, yeah, He's sure. like, I want to mix a yes. monkey with a fish. Let's see it looks happens. like Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> yeah, and I, have, I have his artwork, and it is very similar to the sketches that Mike Magnola draws. Like, mm-hmm. It's just, I love this stuff. This is why the library edition is so much worth it. I'm not sure. I was just knocking the omnibuses earlier because they're soft cover, but I'm not sure if these the sketchbooks in the back here are included in those Omnis or not. Omnis. Mm-hmm. But they are definitely a big part of these library editions. There's some spoiler art in here I don't want to show you all in case. Here's his very first drawing of Hellboy when he was just joking oh. around. Oh, going. wow. He was like, oh, it's not really mm-hmm. Hellboy. But, uh, and Rick Nelson, and you are correct. The there. He did do Cosmic Odyssey. You are right, my friend. He was a, uh, and then what else did he? God, what is what put him on the map? Because this was a huge indie indie book. So the first one was scripted by John Byrne, the bad boy of comics. John Byrne, who's an old <laughs> who's an old man now, but still bad and angry. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I fucking love John Byrne's artwork, in spite of what he is now. Um, he scripted the first volume, and also I yeah. think his first appearance. And then uh, Mignola himself went on to write the second in from, and all the way to Hellboy in Hell. Spoilers, uh, which is the last Hellboy story. Mm-hmm. 
and then of course BPRD blew up and became a huge thing all on its own. And as yeah, don't you have BRPB books back there behind you somewhere? Yeah, the BPRD collection. Yeah, they're that's up there. Thought. Um, they are just as awesome as Hellboy, if not some of the stories in there a little bit better sometimes, depending on what Hellboy story. Now Mignola mm -hmm. co-wrote a bunch of the first few, but then those went on and got their own writers and their own artists and things like that. So, yeah, this, uh, so that, that first part, the seat of the, uh, seat of the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, wake the devil. That was, uh, that was written by Byrne, the scripted by Byrne. And then okay. the second volume was scripted and written by Mignola. So how did you two like the second volume? Ah, oh, fuck, Cycle Cleveland's in the chat. Oh, uh, Cycle Cleveland. for him to join us. <laughs> I really like the second costume. All right, go ahead, Maddie. Sorry. I I really like the second uh, volume. I think more so even just because like I by agree. that that point I knew what was going on, and then I could start to really pick out what was going on with everyone, which is really cool to see how all that all develops. First, because our our boy Rasputin comes back. Yeah. Surprise! Of course, he never, he, we didn't knew that his dog was not going to lay dead. Yeah, so. And then we're introduced <laughs> to um, Vladimir, last name I can't pronounce. Who's also someone that doesn't really die. And then his Vampire. mother is, uh, how do I pronounce it, Hecate? Hecate. Hecate, Hecate, right? Hecate. That feels wrong. The, she's a uh, Roman. Snake lady. Greek snake lady. She's one of those goddesses. There's this. That's what this vault. This volume was the one I felt was way heavy in the mythology. Because you yes. had, they talked about Baba Yaga. That and poor that lady. I know. <laughs> yes, because Slavic folklore. And then uh, Lamia... Uh, I'm is, sorry. Uh, yes. It is really difficult to type with these things, so I have to answer a question. Uh, yes, Rick, the Hellboy editions are evergreen. <laughs> they just come in and out of print all the time, so just keep an eye on them. And Someone this is give the that man... Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, this is, the, this is the way that I would get them if you are into collecting them. Absolutely. Sorry, okay. it's hard to type with my gloves. I'm sorry. I didn't That's know, okay. You have permission to take them off if you need to type, Omar. He, he painted or, these. He put a lot of work into yeah, these. Yeah, a lot of work into these, Amanda. Can you type with one hand? And first of okay. all, uh, don't call me Omar. You're going to give my secret identity away. Anyway, Rick Grayson. Right, Rick. Rick Grayson, call me that's Rick it. Grace, you bitch. Rick. You to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault, Tom Kings. Okay. Uh, yeah, right? So they had um, a lot of um, a lot of mythical, mythological creatures I didn't know. Some names I recognized. And part of that is because of my own interest in mythology and other stories. Other yes. is maybe Omar will understand, but playing the Persona games, <laughs> because a lot of those um, Nerd. Personas you summon <laughs> are like Yevo Mia yeah. and all those. Um, they, they really draw from a lot of mythologies everywhere. But mm -hmm. man, I had to do some research because I thought I knew about this kind of stuff. And I was reading this. Me I was too. Like, Wait, I don't I know a few, but that's it. Like, that's well, it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember reading it the first time and I'm like, I know Baba Yaga's a witch. I'm smart. Yeah. And then all these things were thrown at me. I'm like, chicken leg? What the hell are we talking about? Chicken leg house? And, and, and I'm like, oh my god, I need to read a lot more stuff. And I think part of the thing, I read that when I, I was reading these when, they, when I was in high school. So I'm like, uh, I need to be cooler and more hip than just knowing what Baba Yaga was. And I think that came from just anime, watching anime. Like, they would yeah. use that, that character a lot. Yeah. So. What did, but, uh, yeah. did you all and think this... the the second volume was better i do because there's a little bit um there's a little bit more action in it and i think i appreciate that um so the first volume you know centered around the cavendish family which was really interesting um it was very tragic how mrs cavendish died and her sons couldn't bear you know that was pretty tragic but this one had a lot more action in it it was we got to see hellboy in action a lot more in this one i think even though he had the epic battle with Rasputin in the last one. For some reason, this one he was, you know, fighting you know, Vladimir, and he's fighting Hecate, and he's fighting um, Rasputin again. So he had all those people, and I think there's just more action that I just... And then there's more of the other guys, too. The other BPRD guys, as well. Mm -hmm. So, just seeing all them interact, and seeing how that um, played out, I just enjoyed this one better. You're taking advantage of that, because I can't type, Maddie. Also, um, Cleveland says Hecate. 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 Now, is it Hecate? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. If, if anybody can pronounce foreign languages, it's uh, Psycho Cleveland. Is, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing my name wrong, and he always corrects me. Omer. So, Omar. 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 Actually, I am pronouncing my name wrong. It's not Omar. It's Omar. Yeah, so maybe he's right. Sure. Uh, okay. Continue, Amanda. Sorry. No, that, that was all I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, I just liked it because more of the action in it. And the mythology, I guess. And that weird relationship between uh, Ilsa and... Vlad and Rasputin, whatever yeah. was going on with all the, I don't know where she was. So wait, so he was going to make her the new Hellboy. Is that what we were getting out of that? That's why you put her in the Iron Maiden. Can someone clarify that for me? Uh, no, I didn't get that. I think he was just okay, using what, her to. Uh, well, because he said something to Hellboy that he was no longer of use to him and he had someone else and the Iron Maiden's in the back. So I thought, okay, was he just. Say, I don't need Hellboy anymore. I'm going to use Ilsa. I think he's using whoever he, he needs to get what he gets to to do what he needs to get done. To bring gotcha. his Ragnarok. His I hope Ragnarok. I'm, pronouncing, I'm pronouncing that right, Psycho Cleveland. I don't know. Why is Thor? Did he? How does Thor <laughs> pronounce it? Yeah, but even uh, the, the tree of uh, Yadrasil is in here. And I'm like, oh, yes. Final Fantasy! Back Santa, dude. Yeah! Shows how, oh, the game's the thing I know. It's the thing I know from video <laughs> games. I'm so smart. Me, I am smart. Um, yeah. I love the use of Nazis. Like, I, I, I am definitely with Steven Spielberg. Like, those are the perfect villains, and that's why he <laughs> always use them in Indiana Jones. They really and, are. Right. And, and I love how they keep making fun of Hitler being a small, like, man who's not really that great. Like, the way Rasputin keeps talking about him. Because that's really what he is. I mean, he's just a really great orator, right? was evil but that's what made that's yeah. what made him who he was he's not some strong brute force of a man he just knew how to speak to people or whatever so when we were introduced like okay you two being new readers when yeah. we were in volume two when you were introduced to the new bprd you didn't see them as uh what's it called right um uh, red red shirts am i using that term correctly maddie you uh, tricky? yeah you mean like just people that get sacked cannon fodder cannon what? fodder yeah. Oh. Did you think they were yeah. going to play bigger roles like Liz and Abe Sapien, or did you think they were going to get killed off? I thought they would play bigger roles. I think they were going to, like, they were just introducing someone that it would be building them up yes. or whatever. And it was like, especially nah. the new guy. Yeah, yeah, especially the new guy. I thought there was going to be something there. Why would they introduce this new guy and send right. him off with Liza? And then, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. I was fine with it because I think I'm a big Abe Sapien fan now. So, as long as Abe is fine, that's all I care about. Oh, you should yep. see the Hellboy movies. Doug Jones is an amazing will. job playing him. Seriously. You would like... And yeah. and Hellboy 1 and 2 are very close to what Volumes 1 and 2 and 3 are of the mm -hmm. series. Uh, okay. Is it 3 or 4? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, Guillermo del Toro does an amazing... I mean, Guillermo del Toro. His art looks like Mignola's art come to life. I mean, I'm sorry. His movies look like his art come to life. I believe that, yeah. So, I don't know how I feel about the new movie yet, but we can talk about that in a little bit later. Yeah, I wrote some notes about that new movie. Because I was yeah. interested to see, because when I, when I was looking through it, I was like, okay, so the Seed of Destruction and Volume 1, or Volume 1, Seed of Destruction, and the first Hellboy movie, they have a lot of similarities, um, from what I can understand. So mm -hmm. I was like, how is this new Hellboy movie going to, you know, one of the things that stood out to me on that was that, when I looked at IMDb, Abe Sapien, Liza Sherman, none of them are listed. So that in means me, in the new movie, the 2019 movie coming out what's, with what's her name? Harbour. What's her name? Blair? Ooh, Selma Blair? Selma Blair, I mean, yeah. Yeah, she played Liz in the original ones. Yes. Um, yeah, and Doug Jones plays Abe Sapien. But uh, Psycho Cleveland's right, though. Those movies had so, a different tone. They were more, yeah. even though they had that horror element, they were more jokey. And apparently this new movie is supposed to be a darker tone like the movies. Or I'm sorry, like the, the, the comic books. Okay. But I did not get that from that trailer that leaked. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if y'all seen the leaked trailer, but I was yeah. like, nope, still same the tongue-in-cheek kind of movie that I remember seeing. I thought it was supposed to take a darker tone. <laughs> yeah. Well, so Hellboy still this makes jokes be, in this. Is this supposed to be based off one of the books, or do we know yet? 
Well, because there's it, more, it, it, there's this main series, right? And there's other things. Yeah, so, I, I think yeah, what it, it takes place in because you know, as you'll come to see, Hellboy takes place yeah. in different years, right? So then the BPRD changes the characters in, from the BPRD. Mm -hmm. So, I don't want to spoil much because we know we know certain characters that are going to be in the movie from the BPRD. So that go kind of tells you what it'll be based on. Or at least the years that it should be based on. Okay. Okay. None of them I recognize from the characters that we've read, except for the professor. Professor. Yes, I've. I'm gonna probably butcher his name because I've thought it had a pronunciation in here, didn't it? The big one who dies in the beginning. His or volume dad? one. His dad, I guess, or whoever he is. His foster father. That foster kind of... father. <laughs> Which, like, I remember reading it this time around going, I remember him being a lot closer to that guy. And he was like, oh, man, he's dead. That sucks. Okay. Monster fighting time. <laughs> Is there more to that story as you get, like... Yes, yes. Okay, yes, so there's more to it. Okay, it's not just that that was it, the one and done, and we're just assuming that Honestly, they had a really good relationship. It's... Oh, Benjamin, yes, Roger's the man. Um, the... If I had it, if we had enough time, the way I would have done it was probably read the first four Hellboy, or the first two library yeah. editions. I read the first four trades, but since we were doing this weekly, I was like, "There's no way we could get done with that in time." So, if yeah. you stick to the first two, at least that gives you a small introduction to these characters that are, you know, have become a part of just culture. They're huge. Yeah, yeah, they and, are really. And people look forward to Hellboy, like his series coming back. And then BPRD, I mean, it sold just as well as the Hellboy did at one time. Now that I think that series is coming to an end, finally. So, well, I think it'd be worth it for us to do like a for us like a Hellboy part two, where we just read the rest I of it. I think so. We should. When we're not doing weekly. Uh, hold on, hold on one second. Uh, Sledge, that's the other Latino on Omnibros that's dressing up as Harley Quinn. That's Luis. I, I'm, <laughs> dressing like, I'm dressing up as Nightwing. <laughs> I did not lose a bet. Luis lost a bet. <laughs> Psycho Cleveland wow. is an awesome joke. <laughs> um, so, second story. Yeah. You liked it more? Maddie, what did you think? Amanda said she liked it more. Did you like it more than the first? I really liked it, but I also felt like it was easier for me to follow what was going on because there's a lot of stuff but also i mean i really liked um i really liked uh, uh vladimir's dad i really liked <laughs> that whole bit. i thought he was really funny and charming it was a nice little like i feel like there's a lot going on in this book there a was lot a lot of time and just when you kind of got comfortable with one situation switched to another point of view um and again i think i probably just felt that way because i was reading it fast i think i'll read this again and take my time to see how that affects what I take in. But that mm -hmm. was a really nice part for me to kind of slow down. <laughs> um, I Because he was just so funny, but also kind of pitiful. And he was like, okay, I know I talked about my son like this, but I'm not going to let you have him. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Fine. And then I also really liked the part um, where... Hellboy, it was fighting, um, I guess he was fighting Hecate, and then he woke up. Or maybe it was right before he was fighting Hecate again. Oh, man, sorry. You guys, I'm gonna jarbled mess with this one. No, but basically, it's right. he was he saw Vladimir on the horse, and he's tied up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This part and right that was a really part. funny part. That was but, funny. Yeah, and that's the part that I think, because I was reading it, I still, I was enjoying it, but that moment right there really right there. sold me on Hellboy. <laughs> yes. That moment really sold me on Hellboy because, you know, um, Hellboy's like tied to this, I don't know, pole, pole or whatever. Magical pole. Magical <laughs> pole. And Vladimir magic. is on this horse and he's just doing this big long monologue about his mother and about how he's never yes. going to die and all this stuff. And, and, and Hellboy's just like, come on, come on, <laughs> like, let's. You say you're gonna kill me. This is it. Like, can we just? And finally, he's like, "Okay, I'm just tired of this." <laughs> and then, he, like, lifts the pole up, and then immediately makes this guy explode into a skeleton and his horse. And I thought that, there you go. You got me, Hellboy. You've got me. This cinched me in because before, like, okay, this horse is pretty cool. Hellboy's cool. 
but you know, you know, you always need a moment while you're reading the book that really is like, all right, we got you, we got you, and now we're gonna make you read all the rest of this. I really and I thought, think that's what really did it for I, me. I thought you two would enjoy this when he was like, "These damn things never work." Yes. No, like, no, it works this time. Yes, that was and hilarious. That jetpack it blows up. It was it great. Blows up, and he goes through the building crashing, and that's where like that issue ends. I love that. That I was remember reading that when it first came out. I'm like, oh man, yes, this is what Hellboy's about. Yes, and I look forward to more really of that. Good, yeah, it has some really good lines too. He makes a lot of jokes in it. Um, he says one like towards the beginning about how fighting monsters helps him keep his girlish figure and all right. that stuff. And it, this, he keeps talking about paprika chicken. Now I want some paprika chicken. I don't know. I wanted paprika chicken after yeah. that conversation. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I want some, man. But yeah, it's just those really. There's a lot more moments in this one, I think. That's why it was a much more enjoyable volume. Mm-hmm. And maybe because Agreed. we're past the introduction. Maybe that's yeah, why. And you kind of get used to some of the characters, and then you'll see them yes. appear later on, and you're like, oh, hey, that's Liz. Oh, cool. Roger. Awesome. Well, no, he doesn't appear until the Yeah. Uh, then Abe Sapien, of course. So. Yeah. Yes. And the epilogue was nice, too, with Baba Yaga and Rasputin. I thought that was um, yeah. a really yeah. good way to tie it all together. I think it's got good elements of both humor and... Um, dark and gritty dark. like really really dark stories whereas berserk which is probably my favorite manga Ugh. ever <laughs> is really dark and tries to pull off that humor but it can't do it because that humor doesn't belong in that world where this yeah. he was able to find this perfect balance of funny and dark and it works because of the characters yeah. and even the art mm-hmm. it, it's just amazing but it has to yeah it has to work. Man, I can't... I only ever saw Berserk as the anime, and I can't imagine humor in it. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> well, they tried, because it, there's little fairies, and anyway, that, that's a whole different show. But with yeah. this, he makes it work, and I love that. Oh, he does. I well. love it. I yeah. love that for it. So good would, balance. You two, would you two be interested in reading more, or was this enough Hellboy for you? Or do you want to go watch the movies? Like, what, what do you think? What would you rate it? Ooh. We talked about both... The library or the library edition volume one. What would you rate it? Would you keep going? Would you? I'd rate this as three musketeers. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a trick or treat night. Since you said three musketeers, this does feel yeah. like an Alexander Dumas kind of book, like Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, there we go. It gives me that kind of feel. <laughs> So okay. I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of Dumas' works of Three Musca- or Three Musketeers and All this time, I Cristo, was, Man in the Iron Mask. I feel like that. I know you made it as a joke, but honestly, that's I think that's a really see. Like, well, there you go. Wise, it's a good comparison. Sorry. It is a good comparison. Please well, you continue. know, it's, you, it's a good point. No, it's a good point. Um, but also, it's a, like a Three Musketeer bar. You know, it's kind of it's tasty, um, but it leaves you wanting more because it's not full of calories. I don't know. <laughs> What the fuck kind of review are you doing? <laughs> we're talking about comic books, woman. Oh, I just thought we were going to make it about Halloween since it's trick or treat tonight. <laughs> Not everywhere, just in weird ass Kentucky. Yeah. That's because it's Sorry, guys. Rains. Sorry, guys. Um, no, I think I'd give it, if for a real rating, um, for just since it's volume one and two, I think I'd give it like a 7.5 out of 10 because there's still more i want to know i guess right so as a new reader reading? as a new reader i need to know more maybe that's what i would go for it but the art i'd give that like a nine out of ten because i think the art's amazing yeah agreed maddie what would you give this um i don't think i can rate it yet i think i'm somewhere around where amanda is with this i feel like so now that i've read those first two volumes the first thing i want to do is go watch the movies just as like yes. a, a nice little, um, I guess, review of what I've read, kind of, and also as a way to further connect with these characters. Because um, mo- I, th- I, I feel like a movie would help with that a lot. And then I want to read everything else. And then I feel like I can do a review or, and, and give it a, a fair rating. Because right now I'm just not sure. Yeah. And sometimes but, with books but, like this, I know the, is- the potential's there and I know I'm going to love it. I need to read the rest of it, and then by the end, I'll be Hellboy obsessed. Yeah, for sure. So, but you I'm excited be, for that movie. But you are interested in, in oh, absolutely continuing the journey of Hellboy. Yeah, awesome. I do kind of want to see my money happens. to be taken away. 
by the, <laughs> and by the end of this, I'm going to be like, I'm so in love with Hellboy and Abe Sapien. Wow. Because, I mean, they're like I mean, monster men, and that's totally my thing. So. Together. No, 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 sorry. No, no, I don't know about that. No. Oh, really? That's Not weird. Not everything There's... has to be shipped, Omar. I've Unless met you it's two. shipped <laughs> with me, I'll self ship it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. well, I love exciting. that fish man in Shape of Water. And I, if I like him, I'm going to love Abe Sapien in the movie because both Doug Jones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no shame. I don't care. Hey, and we can make a whole episode about who you would ship with you. Or, is that the right terminology? Yeah, they call it. Oh, we, can, we have a shipping episode about our favorite characters from comics and who we'd ship. <gasps> Let's do it. Yeah, that would be fun. As long as uh, I get to play. Yeah. yeah. Don't talk about the Creation Museum. God, everybody already thinks. Like, guys, guys, Michael Cleveland said, we know we live here. have a giant art museum. I said, yes, and a Creation Museum. Don't bring it up. Yeah, yeah I know. Amanda, don't it, don't, well, they just already, they, they already hate us because of Mitch McConnell, so. Don't give him I, any so more. So do I hate us because our resident fisherman. <laughs> I didn't vote for him, but I don't know who that, no one else okay. runs against. So him. would you ship yourself with Mitch McConnell? Since Absolutely no. never. Oh my god! I'd become a nun. I'd become a nun and remain celibate. I'm just, the rest I'm of my just life. saying, everybody has a buying price. Chris wants. No, we've no. never. I've never been to the Creation Museum or Art Museum, Chris M. And I don't <laughs> think I ever will. I've driven past it. It I've been takes, kicked out of the Creation Museum. And the fact that it gets a bunch of tax breaks is just angers me. But that's another time, another place. <laughs> the turtle. That's yeah. where tax breaks went. God bless. Why are we talking about this? Um, <laughs> also, anyway, it doesn't float. It won't float if there's a disaster. It okay, won't I'm done. float, guys. But I can, tell you all about the, I can tell you all about the septic system, though, because with my job, where I work, we had a whole class about it. Wait, what? So. Okay, so uh, Baltimore, yes, loved it. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, I have not read the last few volumes of Hell on Earth, the BPRD stuff, the last two hardcovers that are coming out, volumes four and five. Volume three, I just got the other day, so I will probably crack that open and read that. But I haven't read four and five. And I'm not really sure how much more we're going to finish it, I know we're supposed to also get some kind of, I remember seeing that there was some kind of solicitation for a Lobster Johnson collection, which I'd like to see. I know that takes place in another year, but I'd like to see that, too. I just want to see the entire universe collected in hardcover. I want to meet Lobster Johnson. He's awesome. that's one hell of a name. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know who that is. He's a oh, secret spy. And you're so me of that. I'm sure this isn't what it is. I don't know if you guys have seen the first episode of One Punch Man, which if you haven't, you should. Yes. But there's this like lobster man with, with like... No, he looks nothing like that. <laughs> well, he doesn't? No. Oh, man. <laughs> he it's does so not. It just with his, like tiny whities. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint, Maddie. <laughs> sorry, I gotta stop thinking about it. <gasps> yes, it, it is a day before Halloween, Lame Works. But uh, like Amanda was explaining, tonight in Kentucky, they decided to celebrate Halloween because they're afraid of the rain and Noah's right. Ark and all yes. that tomorrow. So uh, we do have a live Halloween episode yes. tomorrow, though, tomorrow. on our channel. And that's going to be at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. If you guys want to join us, we're going to talk about our favorite costumes we wore throughout the years. Yeah, we got some doozies. Maddie's going to join. The entire gang is going to yeah. be here. Yeah. Uh, Maddie, Amanda, Rob, Dan, Dan. and Tina. And myself. Tina. I will not be dressed as Nightwing. Maybe the cowboy. No, I think, and I will, I'm baby chess. I'll be my Fall Out Boy shirt for Halloween. So that's going to work. <laughs> sure. I'll wear that's fun. The claw I'll of put justice. Another cosplay or something. Yes, those guys know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Um, that's awesome. So, cool. Um, rereading this... Uh, Thanks, YouTube, for asking what I felt. Uh, yeah. What did uh, you think? Okay. <laughs> Why does anybody ask me about me? <laughs> oh, <laughs> is that Omar. how I sound? Is that how no, I sound? It right? is. Okay. Giving me a hard time. All right. You're really loving those. Uh... Rereading this. I um. I I think the the opening I think was good, but because I have reread this, th this is my third time. I think I'm gonna give it a solid uh, eight out of ten. I really enjoy. This is my kind of story. 
this is mm-hmm. action packed, you know, lots of things that make me want to go and research. Like, that's what I like. I like books with depth and the art is just amazing. He's one of my favorite artists. So definitely eight out of 10. I know, of course, because I've read them before as the stories goes on, by the time, like I said, you get to the library editions, volume three and four, those are 10 out of 10. He is like firing on all cylinders. They are amazing. Um, so yeah, eight out of 10 for the Hellboy library edition, volume one. And awesome. it's a beautiful book that everybody should have on in, in their bookshelves. Burn those uh, omnibus, soft cover omnibuses, or donate them to a friend. Um, okay, so what's uh, what's left to talk about? What we're gonna read next? Uh, what we gonna What are we gonna read next? Because now a, that I've got an November's idea. Over, November's go over. Ahead. Let's go back to superheroes. I mean, October. Sorry, oh, it's been a crisis. October. No, <laughs> we have to start <laughs> Not, on it eventually. We will. We will. We will. Okay. Let's, uh, let's meet next Tuesday at eight o'clock mm-hmm. Eastern Standard Time, mm-hmm. and you know maybe cancel it, um, and and read X Men: God Loves, Man Kills. That's my suggestion. Okay, awesome. Yeah. I have I've been mean to read some X Men. That's a good. good so thing to do. that that to very me, topical right before Election Day. Did yeah, not, did not even plan that. <laughs> that is not the way my brain works. Not that we're going to talk it. about that, but I will talk about the issues in the book. Okay, fair enough. It's probably my favorite X Men story. It's the story that made me the X Men fan that I am today, and mm-hmm. I'd love to know what you two think. So yeah, X Men: God Loves, Man Kills for next Tuesday. Uh, what day is that, Amanda? Calendar, um, lady. The sixth. Wait, wait, Tuesday wait the sixth. Six. Yeah. Which is also election day, so don't forget to go out oh. and vote. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Make you. Make your voices heard. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Okay. We'll so, all bring our, our stickers to prove that we did. Yes. If I get stickers. I don't know. Yeah. I do oh. still. We still do. They can even give one to my daughter, even though she can't vote because she's three. But <laughs> she's cute. So they're like, oh, here's a sticker. <laughs> I dra- I've dragged her to every poll I've had since she's been born. She's gone to every election poll booth with me. <laughs> Good. Kid is going to awesome. be all about voting by the time she's 18. <laughs> or Good. she's going to get sick of it. I don't know one or the other. Good. Uh, so, yeah, if there are suggestions from the chat, we'd love to hear what you know what you guys would like us to read, what uh, comics you want us to tackle next. I know uh, Kingdom Come, I think Darn we were those. looking at that for November sometime, too. So I wanted to get these two ladies a little bit more familiar with the DC characters, but I think maybe by... Late November, we can we can do some Kingdom Come action. But yeah, what else? Uh, what else should we read? And God loves man kills will take you no time. I think it's it's so yeah. fast. Sixty four pages, if that. Sledge really suggested Ghost Rider. Yeah, the NSO Aaron run. Yeah, it's a good run. Oh my God, Lone Wolf and Cub. Man, I love that. <laughs> That's like one of my favorite comp- manga ever. Uh, Fifty two pickup. What? <laughs> <laughs> Elliot. I should have known. I should have read. That's why I'm trying first. to push Infinite Crisis. 52 pickup. That's a good one. Uh, what? Deadly Class is also good. But that one's still ongoing. I, so. But wouldn't it be a good idea to. I really want to read that because when does that sci fi show come out? Is it this year or next year? Next I feel year. like it's next year. Is I think it would be more of like. Gotcha. Keeping just an eye read up to a certain out, point. and then read before they come out. Yeah, and I mean, we could have done that with Titans, but well, that, it's okay. I did you watch? Anyone watch the third episode of Titans? No, I've been busy watching Daredevil, so we can review it. I'm letting I'm that out of the up. Are you? Oh, that's a good. Okay, I'll I've go. been. I'm trying to that's watch it. I'm, I'm gonna let him pile up. Not a few really, episodes. Real. Ariel or Amanda, off. we should do an episode about. Uh, Sabrina, once you're done. Oh my God! Read yes, I'll be too. Oh, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on ten right now, so I'll be done. So we should do an episode. So because... I, watched, I watched the first episode, and I didn't know that it was based on what's his name's comic book, Robert. Uh, yes. Oh, I, yeah. What What is his name? Um, he's He's now one of the co-producers on the show. Of course, they probably give him credit for that because he just created the or made the comic book. <laughs> It's a really good show. I will yeah. say at first I was like, I don't know about this show, but then a certain thing happens and I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. 
Let's That's, see what happens it, next. It'll keep getting better and better, basically. Yes. Well, I just watched oh, the, I first, love the first episode, so I'm in, I'm intrigued. She and, might be she might be beating out Melissa Joan Hart as my favorite Sabrina. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's really <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a '90s girl, but that she's that's great, yeah. Well, I have no yeah. attachment to uh, Melissa Joan Hart other than Clarissa explains it all. So. Oh man, yeah, me too. Those hats she wore, the big, big old hats, yeah. and the yeah. Ooh, Transmetropolitan is good, and that third Absolute comes out sometime next month. Oh, Cycle good. Cleveland says Marmalade Boy. Let's read Marmalade Boy. I'm gonna strangle him with my copies of Marmalade Boy. <laughs> I super want to read Batman White Knight. We could read some read more Batman. It? We only read one ba- Batman. But Batman White Knight is not even like that's an else world. I don't even know what the hell they call it these days. Uh, I guess it's still considered else world. Is that going to be a I special guess. crossover event with the Flash and Arrow? Everyone on the CW. <laughs> Psycho <Psychopathic laughs> is a weirdo Jesus freak. Yeah, no shit, <laughs> dude. They are freaks. Who? Oh Hart yeah. Blows. So is the chick from. Um, Full House. She's still smoking. Candace, yeah, Pluto. she is. I looked up to her when I was younger. Pluto's awesome. What about Fifty Two? Fifty Two will read after Infinite Crisis, so we. Ooh, yeah, I like Fifty Two. <laughs> <laughs> I just get excited. We have like we want to read books that I have that I haven't read, but I have to, like. The... That's why I started this show. It's That's why. Like... That's so I can reread these things that I've had in collected editions forever. <sighs> That's why I want to read Infinite Crisis. I have the omnibus. Like it's just sitting there. Like, hey, Maddie. Okay, you well, read me? Michael Cleveland has dangling some fruit for you. The Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck. Oh fuck. Oh man, that's a good one. Mm. I would like to read some Scrooge McDuck at some point, just to humor you, and just because I enjoyed the cartoon as a child. Uh, Ducktales. Yeah. What's really cool though is like when you look at the art, a lot of it, you're gonna be like, hey, that's in Louisville. Hey, I've been on that river. Hey, like, it's pretty cool. See, that'd be cool. I like stuff he, like that. He uses a lot of the, like, you know, where he where he grew up in his art. So it's really cool to see it. Um, That's how I felt when I watched National Treasure, and they went to the Urban Outfitters I used to shop at in Philadelphia. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's the same Urban Outfitters I hung out in. And the how, Liberty Bell, which I, how, what I ate lunch by. From one of the greatest comic books of all time to <laughs> Nicolas Cage. Because National I was trying Party. to be relevant. Because Nicolas Cage is a huge Superman fan. He reads comics. He, yes, he Wasn't. reads comics. He was Superman. Superman. Yes. yes. You're right. You're right, man. You got me there. You got me. Yeah. That's a good point. He was. <laughs> um. So someone mentioned Pluto, and I definitely want to read at some point some of... Kurosawa? Um, oh, no, Kurosawa. Yeah. Because I've, I've never... I watched the monster anime, and I've never read it, and I've watched 20th Century Boys, the live-action movies, but I've never read those. Oh, really? Pluto is the shortest one. It's like seven volumes, and it's... Okay. I really like it because it's, you know, it's a re- sort of a retelling of Astro Boy. Mm-hmm. Okay. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, thank you, James Atkins. And... Rick Nelson, you should start with Phase 2 of Transformers. It is phenomenal. Like, Phase 1 is cool, and there's a lot of cool things that happen, but you really don't need to read it. And Phase 2 is where the action and all the amazing things happen. Fear Agent. Ah, oh, Fear Agent. That's a good one. That That's, like, that's my favorite Rick Remender book. And I love Rick Remender. He's the guy that wrote uh, Deadly Class and Uncanny X-Force and things like that, but... Oh my god. Fear Agent is... Like, that's his magnum opus. Uh, that's a good one. Son of the Sun. Okay, so why don't we do this? Why don't we do the X-Men... Uh, god Loves, Man Kills, and then we'll start... We'll talk about, like, the Infinite Crisis. Like, what to read okay. afterwards. Next week. Okay, that Great. sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Sledge, Yay. yes, your agent is that good. It's wonderful. Uh, Cycle Cleveland, you're wrong. <laughs> oh, wait, on which <laughs> a lot. There's a lot of things that you can <laughs> just, You're wrong, that's it. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Deadly Class is awesome, but ah, I can't ruin it. Something happened that pissed me off that I'm like, no, you should have left that alone, Rick Remender. 
then this would have been better than Fear Agent, but Fear Agent is still better. <laughs> so I guess it all depends on where it ends. Superman for All Seasons would be awesome, too. Actually, oh, that's please. a damn good one. That's chubby Superman. I like that guy. I would like to read more of yeah. Superman anyways. Okay. Well, yeah, we, we haven't uh, read a lot of it. And actually, that, one doesn't, that one's only four issues. So if we oh, do, that's okay. good. That's super easy. Okay, so why don't we do the six, um, God Loves Man Kills, and then the 13th, we can do Superman for All Seasons. Sounds good okay. to me. Then we get in time. We can do a longer read then coming up because that's Thanksgiving, and then we have, you know, the week after that's Thanksgiving after the 13th. So Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so why don't we do that, and then we'll decide what to read then. So on the 6th, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, X-Men, God Loves, Man Kills, and the 13th is yeah. Superman for Look, all seasons. Did you, see, did you see Rick's comment about doing an episode about good comic recognition for young readers? Yes, Rick. And Omar has good suggestions. He bought my daughter for her birthday some the Teeny Titans. Berserk Volumes 1 yes, through Berserk, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> he bought her her own... Um, Uzumaki, so she could also read that, you know, so <laughs> he thought she was ready at three, I don't know. Um, no, but Omar has some really good suggestions. For, yeah, that and we could totally really do that, too, yeah. and it could be, we could make it not necessarily like a regular old reader, new reader show, but we could do like a, you know, maybe a one-time only thing, or like, yeah, just well, we, can, yeah. we, can, we can special episode. episode. One of our panel shows. Yeah. That you, yeah. That you two are now a big part of, so. Yeah. Uh, that is a good idea. No, Sledge, we haven't read uh, Usagi yet, but that's a good recommendation. Psycho Khalifa, I don't even I don't even know which story <laughs> that is. Ghost Ghost Story. Peter Okay. He does re- actually I, I give Psycho Khalifa a lot of shit, but he recommends a lot of things that are really good. Like he's wrong fifty percent of the time, but then the other fifty percent of the time he's on point. So there you go, man. There mad props to Psycho Cleveland. Yes. That's probably not even right. It's probably seventy five percent right. Yeah. What's up, the Will? My boy from Peru. Hey, Will. That guy's from Peru, so he's a cool dude. He doesn't know. <laughs> I can't figure out who's behind that mask. We can't either. Me neither. He says his name is Rick Chris. His fucking name is not his Rick. Name, his name is Rick. Let's get it right, not God Dick. It's it. Rick Grace. Rick. I'm gonna boot both of you off the show and lose all the ratings. <laughs> Let's see. Banana Jester says, I need recommendations for my fifth grade class. I want them to compare and contrast characters and learn about plot and settings. Oh, wow. Lumberjanes. Honestly. I think something like Lumberjanes or like... Gotham, what about the uh, Gotham Academy? Oh, yeah, Gotham Academy. That's a really good one. Well, they have a crossover too, which is great. Lumberjanes and Gotham Academy. I think fifth um, grade. A lot of manga. Oh, I'm, my, my wife, books are good. My wife used to... She taught freshman English, and she would keep a ton of manga, along with Sandman. But I think Sandman's a little more mature than fifth graders need to read. Mm-hmm. Um, Ultimate Spider-Man. Actually, nah, my daughter's reading Ultimate Spider-Man, and she's in the fourth grade. So that's um, a, Something that's like Marvel one. Rising or like Miss Marvel. Um, yeah, Marvel's good. Good. Miss Marvel would be good. Yeah, I think compared to DC... Marvel has a lot of options that are really good for younger audiences. Oh, Unstoppable Wasp. There you go. I can't That's recommend good. that yes. enough. Honestly, like I, I feel like it has a great message for one. It also has. It's just. It's very accessible to a younger audience. It's also. It's just really fun. Also, so I think you can do a lot with that. And there's a lot of characters in there in different age ranges as well. And I think that's very helpful. So. Ooh. Think about it. Sledge, that's a good question. What's his Which question? Which one's first? Tokyo Ghost versus Fear Agent. I'll tell you what, Sledge. You read Tokyo Ghost first, and it is awesome. I loved it. But then you read Fear Agent, and it's better. And I'm like, I, I don't know. It's my it's my favorite Rick Remender book. Like when I did my top twenty non superhero comic books, it was hard because Rick Remender had so many books that I enjoyed. But it always comes back to Fear Agent because he puts a lot of himself in there. Like in a kind of alcoholic, depressed main protagonist. Like, I don't know. I really enjoy that book. It's awesome. E. Tyler, what's up, buddy? Congratulations on the in stock trades gift card from last night. Yeah, and Tokyo Ghost is short. It's only ten issues. Yeah, might be a good one to read too. 
guess we'll decide. At so for now, point, yeah, yeah. So for now, we got our next two weeks, and they're and they're shorter. Yep. Nothing, nothing too crazy, like eighteen volumes of Monster, or um. Eventually, maybe it's a Christmas break read. That would be. Yes, a good one. can't. That sounds or, like a good plan. Vagabond is excellent, but it's not finished, so I don't know if it's going to be excellent. Like he's still going on with the series, but to me, I think the series that uh, Vagabond, by the way, is a manga, um, by the guy that did Slam Dunk. And, Ooh, I love Slam Dunk. Oh, his art is beautiful. You should you mm-hmm. should check out Vagabond. But to me, I think the prettiest samurai action comes from Blade of the Immortal. So it, it's wonderful. I I love it. Oh, um, I do want to say really quick, uh, shout out to Thomas Judge. He uh, he was kind enough to send me these books right here, all the way from overseas. This is uh, Elephant Man. Oh, wow. Volumes one and two, they're the hardcovers. He's been wanting me to read it, and maybe something I can pass along to you too. But I've never read Elephant Man because we were talking one day when I was—I think it was during my haul videos. Like that, he was like, "Have you ever read Elephant Man?" And I'm like, "No, I haven't." So he was—he sent these from all the way overseas, and that was really kind. Wow. Um, That's awesome. So, so thank that you, Thomas. Awesome. Thank you, and I enjoyed your little note. Um. Okay, so. Everything's been decided. You've got to see us yep. with our cool Halloween costumes. Um, Amanda, would you do us the honor of yeah. letting everybody know where to follow us and find yeah. us and things like that? Yeah, so thanks everyone for watching. Uh, just remember again, tomorrow we are doing a live episode, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The whole Near Me Condition crew talking about our favorite Halloween costumes from the past. It's a show um, and tell. Show and tell. Show and tell. We'll be showing and telling. Yeah, so we're not just going to tell you about them. You're actually going to get to see us in some of these costumes. Um, should be fun. And uh, as always, make sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at, at Near Mint Con. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for our next week's episode. Um, doing X-Men on November 6th. Same time. Well, 8 o'clock. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> We're going to go back to our normal time. So, thanks everyone. We appreciate y'all watching. And have oh. a good evening. Good night, everybody. Bye, guys. Good night.